It's Believe in Vikings, and free agency starts in less than two weeks. Actually, it's about a week and a half because legal tampering is when the action really starts, when players can verbally commit to teams and sign official deals a couple days later. Uh, We have the usual group, minus Sally. She should be back in a few weeks, we think, before the draft. Uh, But tonight we have a special guest, Silas, Bob and Dreyer from Zone Coverage. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show, a first-time guest. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. And how long, sir, have you been a Viking fan? I know you're a youngin, but you've been around here since how long? 18 years. 18 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so since, since you were a baby, huh? Absolutely, yeah. We'll take he's it. 18 or he's been a Viking fan for 18 years? <laughs> I'm 18, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what? Yep, so that's uh, he's a lifer, for better or worse. Um, all right, so hot and heavy this week is the NFL Combine. The action for it, you know, the on-the-field measurables should start tomorrow. And in the past couple of days, we've had, like, the rumor mill churning out who's going to throw, who's not going to throw conveniently. Uh, the Vikings' two leaders took the podium on Tuesday and were somewhat forthcoming in asking questions, answering questions from reporters. Uh, but, Bryant, uh, you're, you're the only one on the show with actual Combine experience, so I want to ask you, Back to your combine days from 2002. Do you have any memories to share with the the panel? Um, it was just a day of just basically like you feel like you was at like <laughs> I don't know, like put on the show. Like you had you were just given a number, and you kind of like walked around with your you know your number and you know your whatever you're gonna work out in at the time. University of Miami guys didn't work out at the combine. We were just there for all the meetings. Um, uh, I forget who my roommate was. It was somebody else randomly from another school. Um, it was a cool experience, Got you know, getting to meet other guys. We did the Wonder League test, test and things like that, and we talked football more. I didn't really experience the whole, like, running the 40 and stuff there. We waited till, at the time, we waited till we um, had our own pro timing day. But um, it was a cool experience. Uh, and coaches got to meet you in person and kind of get a feel for the type of person you are in person. So you, you had, like, low-key different type of interviews um, with like head coaches and their teams and stuff. And did you meet with the Vikings at the combine? No, I didn't. No, I, I think I've seen. I might have seen Coach Tice, but I didn't have a meeting with them. No, so to me, honestly, the Vikings weren't on my radar because I never met with them. Okay. Now, you being someone, um, obviously a high-profile athlete from a high-profile school, um, when you are in that position, you're at the combine. Um, outside of the like the drills and stuff, I know obviously you just said meetings and whatnot. Like, what do you do during the like while the other athletes are participating in the you know in the forty-yard dash and the bench reps and all that type of stuff? What does an athlete that isn't participating do to pass the time? We watch and we watch some stuff. Uh, we watch some stuff. Um, we were there for all the meetings and like, we, like I said, we would like find time to do other things, like meet with different teams and things like that. Um, if they weren't out there watching somebody do the forty or anything, um, I think we did like the we did some drills. We just didn't we just didn't bench press and we didn't do the forty. So I remember doing like the um, the vertical and a couple things there, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a lot. Of it. Did you save all that for the pro day? Did you officially? Yeah, test there? it was like they tried to pressure you to do stuff, but I mean, at the time, that was just the thing that University of Miami, that was their thing is none of us, we all had a pack that we weren't performing. So, and, it, and, and that it, we did day. that because <laughs> we did that because we had, we knew we had a good team. Right. And it would force everyone to come down to our school to watch the other guys who didn't get invited. Right. Well, I, yeah, that, I know we've talked at nauseum about how great you know, on paper and uh, talent wise, that team that you had in Miami. So I'm sure that you would say on some levels that the talent at your Miami pro day was probably not, not disparaging any of the participants at the combine, but you guys could have uh, <laughs> had your own combine at just your own pro day. I bet. For the most part. And I feel like by us doing it, it did allow a lot of people to get drafted. Okay. Interestingly, the Vikings this week, kind of a parallel, they hired Josh McCown as their quarterback's coach, and he was at that combine with McKinney. Mm -hmm. He was actually drafted the day after McKinney was. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So he's uh, he's your generation, so to speak. Now he's going to be the Vikings quarterback coach. Uh, He'll probably do a pretty damn good job. I wouldn't expect him to be a a Viking for long, um, but it's cool that they made somewhat splashy coaching hire when the other coaching hires were somewhat 
anonymous. Uh, Silas, this is your turn, sir. We're going to talk about some of the here and now current Viking stuff. I'm guessing that you watched or at least scanned the headlines from the press conferences on Tuesday involving Kwesi Rafa Mensa and Kevin O'Connell. And there were some news newsworthy nuggets that come up, came out of that. They were predictably asked about Justin Jefferson's extension and they're not treating him. They said Daniil Hunter, they were a little bit more diplomatic and on Kirk cousins. It really wasn't new news, but they both use the same platform to say that they want cousins back i think the money and the structure of the compact contract remains a sticking point but based on what adafa minson o'connell said at the combine silas did that change your opinion at all about the eventual outcome of cousins future in purple i believe that a lot of it comes down to how much cousins is going to want and guarantees in the uh the length of the contract that he's looking for and i believe that that has been the same sticking point when it comes to finding an extension I would not be surprised if they signed Kirk to an extension. However, he's going to compromise from, you know, he's he's had about 99% of his career earnings guaranteed uh, coming all off these, you know, veteran deals that he's signed um, and these extensions that he's had with the team. Um, and then if he's looking for a two or three year deal, whereas if we're looking to, you know, have that rookie quarterback timeline to match up with the Justin Jefferson extension and the other um, extensions that will be following like a Christian Derrissaw extension, you know, Hawkinson's new money is going to be kicking in soon. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I I don't know if it changes all that much, this this escape of the uh, scene, but I I do believe that they want him back and I do believe that they will try and make that happen. And I I would not be surprised if it did. My opinion on this isn't based on any insider intelligence, but what I think has happened is the Vikings have presented him an offer quite some time ago. And whatever that number is, if it's two years, 70 million guaranteed, I think it's probably a notch down to what Cousins can command from the Falcons, for example. Um, Do you think that he has, just based on how you know the sport, a take it or leave it offer on the table? Or do you think this is all fluid, Silas? I think that it's fairly fluid. Cousins has flexibility here. He's got a great system. He's got a great coach who wants him and knows how to work to his strength. He was performing at the highest level of his career and, you know, in that limited stretch before his injury. And he's got Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in the league, along with TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison. I mean, there have been so many resources. There are just a ton of resources dedicated to the situation around him that could also help the rookie quarterback. But Atlanta also has, you know, an impressive weapons group. I, I do not think that Kirk would want to leave the one that he has now in favor of that. And I think that that could be very big when it comes to the negotiation process and uh, how much money he's willing to you know, leave on the table. Yeah, that's one thing about Cousins. We know for certain that he has the lovable dad persona and the Coles cash jokes. But uh, when you get down to brass tacks, <laughs> the guy always gets a guaranteed bag, as he should. Uh, so, yeah, let's not get fooled into thinking this will probably end up in a hometown discount like some thought would happen about, what, six weeks ago. Uh, Ron, at the the Combine, both leaders pretty much said the same thing. And afterward, there was kind of a new enthusiasm that, man, these guys sure do want Cousins back. And then you ask yourself, well, what else would they have said? Um, I don't know that they would have come out and said, oh, well, we had a good run and he's probably leaving. I don't think they would say that. So I want to know from you, sir, I think you've been consistent in thinking Cousins would be back and that as your preference as well. Did the Combine interviews change that at all for you, Ron? I think it actually more solidified um, kind of what I think would happen anyways with him returning because they could always play it close to the vest and give the, you know, company line, um, you know, we'll see what happens or, you know, they like just not address it to the extent of, you know, we want him back where they, they basically came out of it saying how big of fans they are of his and how much they want him back and how they know what to expect out of him. Whereas if that wasn't the case, or if they're, if they were really looking to to move on, um, they would have just, you know, again, given those corporate answers of, you know, well, you know, free agency or whatever the windows opens up or, you mm-hmm. know, that type of stuff, they would have pointed to the dates of we can't negotiate with them until this date and that type of stuff. But um, I, I mean, I think, again, it's, I think we're all in the same boat at if the dollar is right. Like, yeah, I think, I don't think there's any Vikings fan, even the ones who are anti Kirk that wouldn't want a, you know, a reasonable deal. So um, now again, to the point of he's always got guaranteed money and he's always, you know, he's made a lot of money in the NFL. So I personally, I don't think Kirk is the type of guy that's going to be, 
commanding the max of what he's eligible for. Now, again, I don't know what that means. Um, this is one of the reasons why I said last year they should extend him because knowing that the cap is always going up, you know, and then it came out that it's going up 30 million or so. <laughs> so now if you are Kirk, if you are JJ, all these guys that you didn't extend, now it's just costing more money because there's still, it's a percentage of the cap that they're going to want. Whereas if you would have done this last year, that number, even if it was at say 40 million, 40 million now with the cap, the way it is, looks a whole lot less than 40 million or, you know, what the equivalent of 40 million is now. So um, I just, I personally think that Kirk being at, you know, he'll be 36. Um, I think when he means structure, I think it's, he would rather, you know, like a three, four year deal um, with less money than, you know, to take a, a two year deal at, you know, $90 million or whatever. I think it, the stability of his comfort level here, you know, he being up at home in Minnesota and his other home in Michigan. Um, I know the rumors of his family, his wife's family is from Atlanta, but you know, it's, I don't know how much of a play that has into it. Cause I think structure of the team and contract means more to him than the actual dollar amount. Notably, since 2021, which I consider Kirk Cousins' best season as a pro, the salary cap has gone up $73 million, uh, which is really wild that the TV money really filed in. And it's it's good for everybody, um, especially the players. Uh, Bryant, we've talked about Cousins a lot uh, this offseason, rightfully so, because it's the almighty offseason domino. And it looks like this thing could go all the way up to free agency eve or free agency day. Do you foresee Cousins back with the Vikings, or do you think it can go either way? Um, I'm sure the Vikings would mind having him back just to have him there. And even if they were bringing somebody else in new to have him groom that new person, um, for him, from a business standpoint, I feel like you've made a lot of money. And I feel like at this point in his career, if he's looking for a fresh start, then he will leave. But if not, if he's about, if it's based off comfortability, like being, just being comfortable, then he'll stay here because he's been there for a while now. He's comfortable. He knows the system. He's familiar with the coaches, the area and everything to pick up and leave now this point um and go somewhere else it really depends on him as a person to have to start over in a whole new city and a whole new system program get to know coaches players and everything else like that but here he's already familiar with everybody so i can kind of see him wanting to stay here um that's just like leaving going to a new school and have to meet a whole bunch of new friends all over again so it just depends on where he's at in his with his mindset I completely agree with you, Bryant, um, about Cousins starting over. And I think this is an underrated talking point that nobody really brings up, probably because Cousins himself wouldn't be skittish. But uh, I don't think anybody would disagree that 2018 was Cousins' worst season as a Viking. And then you watch the document. I mean, it wasn't bad, uh, but it was probably his least productive um, as an individual. And when you watch the Netflix documentary last summer, you learned how studious he is about learning a new system. And so you almost have to wonder if he needs a couple of years to get into that flow and comfort zone of being a wonderful quarterback, which he is. And at 36 with a bad Achilles, I guess he might risk starting over. And then, you know, when he starts to hit his groove, boom, he's 37, 38, 39, which isn't crazy old, but it really is an outlier for quarterbacks to perform at it, uh, you know, cousins level at that age. We're just so spoiled by Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady uh, in, in this generation. So it's something to keep in mind about cousins starting over is that it wasn't his most glorious season when he started over in 2018. Um, all right, Silas, <clears throat> let's talk about running backs. This is another underrated thing, especially um, if you want the Vikings offense to fully be <laughs> unlocked and cook. Eventually, they got to learn to run the ball at least average. You know, it's got to be 15th, 16th in the NFL besides this 27th bullshit we've had the last two years. So at the combine, Silas, both guys sounded really open to what they said, infusing the running back room with a free agent or a rookie. Uh, I would prefer a rookie uh, because Ty Chandler feels like he should get an audition at the very least for RB1. But I'm going to ask you, Silas, who's it going to be? Is it going to be DeAndre Swift or is it going to be Braylon Allen? Give me your prediction at running back. I would also prefer a uh, rookie. Um, I, You know, the the team and the staff are obviously very impressed with what they've seen from Ty Chandler, and they're wanting him to develop further and take on a larger role. Uh, Alex Madison was not horrible. He wasn't, he wasn't bad, but he was not what we could have used at times last year. <laughs> when it comes to the rookie scape, landscape, um, there are a ton of, you know, really interesting young players Um the running back at USC, Marshawn Lloyd, 
You've got Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin, Jonathan Brooks out of Texas recovering from the major injury that he had. I, I would advocate for – I would actually really like one of those three players specifically, but, I mean, I would also like to see Ch Ty Chandler get a shot at it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Chandler, <clears throat> it's kind of funny. I don't know, Ron, if you noticed this. When both Vikings leaders were asked about the running game, they both started off their response with, yeah, Ty, comma, did a really good job. And they got to Madison. They're like, yeah, he did some good things. Uh, so it sounded almost unabashedly that Chandler, if of this group, would be the RB1 and Madison would uh, fall back into a familiar role, whether RB2 or RB3. Uh, but who do you think, Ron, when we look up week one, who will be the RB1 and do we get a new one? Well, I think... I think Chandler by default will start regardless of who they bring, unless they bring in a high, a high priority free agent, which I don't see them doing, nor do I see the value in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've said on this show numerous times, I'm fully in the camp of draft a, a running back in the second or third round and do that every three years, like never pay top dollar for running back. Um, just because when they hit that, you know, 26, 27, 28, year old mark um the decline usually sets in and it's usually a pretty significant drop off so you don't want to be handcuffed you know unless you're Derrick Henry and you're just a you know a monster of a human and a freak of nature but um I mean I'm, I'm you know in the draft whether it's you know Jonathan Brooks or the kid from Tennessee um you know even Blake Corum has some appeal um I don't know how his game translates to the NFL really um or um, Bucky Irving, um, you know, these guys that are dual threat can catch out of the backfield. Now, pass protection is going to be a big thing, and I know that's probably the main reason why Madison kept his job for so long, because of pass pro. Um, so that, that'll be a big part of it as well. Um, but there's plenty of guys out there, even, you know, in what, like the fifth or sixth round, grab Frank Gore Jr. Like just, you know, the pedigrees there, <laughs> you know, Brian, obviously, you know, you probably know Frank Gore's kid and I don't know exactly how good of a prospect he is, but if I ever have a chance to to go on a legacy pick, just to see what they have, if he's a fraction of what his dad was, then he's going to be a hell of a player. Yeah. From this draft, we also have Luke McCaffrey, which is Ed McCaffrey's son, Christian's brother and Brendan Rice, Jerry Rice's son, who should probably go off the board in round three or four. He's just not crazy fast. Uh, which sounds a lot like his, his dad at times. Uh, Bryant, so the Vikings don't have a quantity problem at running back. They got five dudes under contract at running back for next year. Let's say they, they remained with the similar running backs and maybe they signed a new center or a new guard or both. Can can two offensive linemen in a new unit help fix the ground game by it like by itself? Or would they need to adapt the scheme? Or is this all come down to like a you know a new running back? Well, how have the running backs been playing? What's that? How have the running backs been? They've been well, they've been... uh Ty Chandler, who kind of took over the last month this season, played quite well. Um, but we, we don't have enough evidence to see if it's sustainable. So some have wondered, some Vikings fans have wondered if this is a scheme thing, if this is an offensive line problem, that they're just not very good at run blocking like they were during the Zimmer days. So I guess my question was, would you would you trust an offensive line solution if they just kept the same running backs? Um, well, I feel like the offensive line can definitely approve, you know, because, I mean, if they do their job, they, they'll open up more holes. Um, in the new, in it being the new year, I expect the running back to kind of improve as well, too. So, I mean, offensive line can definitely make a difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ty Chandler is notably older than Alexander Madison, which is always kind of a weird factoid. Uh, but he has fresher legs and he's only going to be in year three. I think most Vikings fans would rally around giving Chandler the audition. It just seems like if they once and for all want to fix this ground game, because it didn't get fixed at all uh, in 2023, that perhaps like Silas and I's recommendation, you have, you know, a rookie from the third, fourth, fifth round waiting. And they also have Dwayne McBride, who some are still a little bit high on. So we can have hope in that. All right, Silas, I want to do this back to the quarterback spot. Um, we are 10 days away from or 11 days away from free agency. I want you for me, good sir, let's say at September 5th or September 6th, predict the quarterback room for these Vikings. Not what you want, what you think is going to happen. The way things are currently shaped, I would say that Kirk Cousins will be our starting quarterback. And then we will. 
I don't know. It's it's very interesting. I could see them also drafting a quarterback, you know, uh, like like a JJ McCarthy if he is available at uh pick eleven or you know in the second round if uh Michael Penix is there or if Bonex well, you gotta, to be you gotta there. lock one in <laughs> for the yeah, prediction. Yeah, I, I, I will lock one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll lock in Kirk Cousins as the starting quarterback. Beyond that, I I will say that there isn't a ton of change. Oh, so if you had to do QB two and QB three, you wouldn't even toss in. You know, the... no, I think continuity. I think that they really value continuity in that room, familiarity within the system. If they're not going to have a high end rookie, I do not think that they would commit a ton of resources to anybody who would have to come in and learn to, uh, you know, grow in the system, especially in Kevin O'Connell's fairly complex system. You know, if Kirk suffers another serious injury like he did this year, that would put us in another one of those situations where we have to hope for, a, you know, a sustained Josh Dobbs run type <laughs> of thing. And that's not, I don't believe, what the team is looking for at this time. So you basically have Cousins, Mullins, Jaron Hall. Yeah. Yeah, I do. All right. I think I'm going to be the outlier, which is really weird on this show. Um, even though I won't be surprised or mad one iota that Cousins is resigned, I'll certainly get behind it. Um, I just, I'm stuck on this. If they wanted him, they would have signed him last year when he was young, one year younger and one year healthier. Um, so I can't quite understand why they wouldn't have extended him last year. And now we have more evidence with Achilles stare and he'll be 36. So I keep coming and then it bothers me. They haven't done it already. And like, it seems like there's nothing stopping them from, Hey, it's February 10th. Let's sign Kirk. And I don't think they can because his contract doesn't void um, until what is it? The 13th or something. So I don't think per league rules, I don't think they can. Oh, the Vikings can't even talk to him. That I didn't know. No, it, it's yeah, it's uh when is I, I I believe it's when his contract voids. That's the when the, the window starts. Okay, all right. Well, then that would explain why they haven't uh you know hit any brass tacks right now. But I I still believe that this is the off ramp, and that Cousins does go to the Steelers or the Falcons. And I am marrying my my wish list and my prediction. I do believe the Vikings will trade up, um because. They are self-described near the end of the competitive rebuild at the year-end press conference. Kwesi Dafamensa said they have to have a bold and efficient offseason to get rid of the rebuild part of the competitive rebuild. I don't know. I just don't understand why the Vikings would have a rebuild when they wouldn't do anything quarterback besides Jaron Hall. So my prediction is they trade up with the Patriots. They ultimately get Drake May, and then Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall would be the backups. Uh, I know that's out there, but I I just think that this regime, especially Kwesi, is young and progressive enough to do something splashy to get their guy. Ron, your QB one, two, and three for September. So I, I do think Kirk is back as the starter. Um, and I, but I think I have a kind of a foot in both camps. I think Kirk's a starter and I think that they, they try to get JJ McCarthy. I don't know if it's at 11 or possibly trading back, uh, but I think that, is kind of the perfect scenario of, you know, a 21 year old quarterback um, to pair with a veteran where, you know, you get a couple of years out of Kirk, you know, hopefully do that. The Patrick Mahomes or Alex Smith and the Patrick Mahomes where give it a year, see what happens. And then let, you know, Kirk have the decision of, you know, where he wants to get traded to or whatnot. But, um, and I'm not going to, you know, firmly say it's McCarthy because I do think either a Penix or Bo Nix, um, it would be an option in the second round as well. Um, but with that, obviously they're a little older. I mean, in comparison to JJ McCarthy, they're what, 24 years old. I don't care. <laughs> um, but I think the ideal scenario for the Vikings and what I believe is going to happen is Kirk at one, uh, Nick Mullins technically still the two because he is under contract. He's a veteran. He's a smart, heady guy. And then that rookie quarterback at the three um, with Jaron Hall being the odd man out and probably on practice squad. Okay. And do you want to lock in McCarthy or Penix or just going to leave it as one of those guys? It, I mean, because at, at 11, there's so many different options. Like if there's a run of all offense in the first 10 picks and you can take any one of those top defensive players that you like, um, or even I'm all on board in trading back, you know, trading back a little bit, stockpiling some picks because there's so many names out there that, you know, are second round, early second round type picks, like whether it's Chop Robinson or is it Jarius Robinson, um, you know, the, um, the Missouri uh, defensive end, um, you know, the um, Devon, Tavondre Sweat, um, the mammoth of a human. Like, There's so many guys that in my mind I would absolutely love to have. 
And uh, so I'm all on board and just doing methodically trading back to do that. But again, that's only if you have Kirk under contract. If you don't have Kirk, then 11 or higher needs to be a quarterback. But staying at 11 and taking quarterback to be the starter, that just gives me ponder vibes. Um, and, <laughs> and I don't I don't like that at all. Yeah, I think if that had never happened in 2011, we might be like, yeah, let's give it a whirl. But since we know how that can end up and set the franchise back at least three years, yeah, I'm, I'm with you that that would be a little little paranoid on April 25th. Uh, Bryant, Cousins back, drafting a rookie, both and either. What do you think? No, I think he's going to be back. I think, they're gonna, I think he'll be back. Okay. I think they'll draft – I think both. Okay. I think they're going to draft a rookie, and I feel like he'll be back to like at least groom them. And if he gets injured again, then they'll – put the rookie in and then part ways with him after that. Yeah. I think that is the, probably the safest way to play it. If you want to be consistently competitive, Um, if you trade it or if you let Kirk walk to free agency and you said, you know what, we're going to trade up and get Jaden Daniels. You'd probably have to consent that your ceiling for that year is eight and nine, nine and eight, assuming, you know, he's not CJ Stroud all over again. Um, and, you know, it's just like the Bridgewater year where 2014 or you watch it and, you know, ends up seven to nine, but you still go into it pretty damn excited the following year that is. All right. So we have, uh, I guess I'm the, I'm the only man that uh, on this show, at least that thinks that Cousins is probably going to walk. Uh, I do think the Falcons make a lot of sense, but then I've also, I've had it, I've had it both ways. I've, I've thought Justin Fields could end up there via trade and now sports books are on that as well. The last thing I'm going to ask you guys is kind of a weird one, Silas. Uh, I'm not going to get greedy. <clears throat> I'm going to say uh, which which Minnesota team gets to a championship first. Is it the Wolves, Vikings, Twins, or Wild? I think and it's the Twins. <laughs> it, I, I'd love for it to be the Vikings, but it's going to end up being the Timberwolves. Uh, they've got that 40-20 you know, win-loss ratio that uh, you know the championship contenders are typically made of. They've got you know, an incredibly young star on Ant. They've got a great play, a, a, a bunch of elite, you know, players and Cat, Gobert, you know, the great depth and uh, Nas Reed and, you know, a few other guys. But yeah, I think it'll be there. Okay, so they get there first. I'm going to guess uh, Ron has no qualms with that answer. Uh, Ron, let's say, <laughs> let's say you Wild Twins, Vikings, or Wolves. I mean, I think just numbers, the, the Timberwolves are by far the closest uh, between the ready-made roster now with the, the top-level talent and the nice ancillary pieces, plus the, you know, they have their top seven players essentially all under contract for next year. Um, like there's none of this, you know, what's going to happen or what's the turnover going to be like. So that's a, a, that's a big deal. Plus they have owners that want to spend money, um, you know, with A-Rod coming in, um, you know, the luxury tax, being able to go over that, they can spend money. So um, now that's not to say the Wilfs don't, because I truly believe that the Wilfs spend money um, and, you know, will do want to continue to build the team. Twins are last on the list by far because the pole ads <laughs> can just fucking kick rocks. Um, the, the team will not be good until they're long gone from the franchise. So I've seen like the team grades and the Wilfs was up there ranked like getting a lot of A's from the Vikings facility yeah. and then it's from ownership and all that too. So, I mean, it's coming along. <laughs> I think the, the the hardest part with, with where it is football compared to basketball, where basketball, you can have one player that can swing it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a- Ant can swing a series, whereas unless you have a patch from Mahomes, it's, you know, it's hard to swing it. Like, you know, again, go back to your Ravens days, you know, Joe Flacco got extremely hot and beat some of the best quarterbacks of all time. And, you know, yes. like, would that be nothing against Joe Flacco? But if you line him up on a, you know, week by week basis, him versus, you know, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, like, you know, everyone's going to go with Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, but get hot at the right time. And, uh, you know, you need things, more things to fall in place. So. Yeah. Brian, your team on your shirt right now, the dolphins, they ranked number one out of all the NFL PA report card grades. It went uh, dolphins and then Vikings. In terms of culture, cultures, uh, ownership, and that was good. So I was like two teams that you know I played with. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, good to see that they're ranking good. I was happy to really see the Vikings up there, though. Yeah, they were number one last year. These things started last year, and it has that big uh, report card, that rubric of it's like mm-hmm. 13, 18 percent owner, twelve percent head coach, and then they go through the. Yeah, the city was at the bottom of a lot, but they're still yeah. in the championship, so it was like <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
Does it really matter? <laughs> yeah, it was so weird to see the owner. Patriots the, are down there too. Yeah, the yeah, owner right. of the current dynasty as the worst owner in football based on players' opinion. This isn't some, you know, dickhead writer's list. This is the players. <laughs> right. And yeah, that's what I, like, normally you'd see a list like this and be like, oh, who cares? It's just some guy's opinion. But this is 1,300 players who replied. Uh, yeah, it was an oddity. Um, I agree with both Silas and Ron on the Timberwolves. And I'll give my little Timberwolf speech here. Um, the reason that they can be consider, considered contenders tonight or yesterday was their de- is their defense. Uh, sometimes these te- these teams spring up. Uh, I always recall like the Hawks when LeBron was on the Heat, and it was like that team isn't going to do shit. And then they didn't do shit. Uh, this was like ten years ago because they just didn't have killers on their roster, and their defense was okay, good. But this Timberwolf defense is fantastic. Um, so this. Right. This playoff here and starting in a couple months, this is going to come down to, we already know the defense is going to be there. It's whether or not Anthony Edwards is ready to close out games consistently and be the guy to ascend certifiably to a top five level of NFL or NBA stardom. That is the only thing that would separate them this year from getting to the finals. I know the Denver Nuggets will be a huge pain in the ass to get through. I'm a Laker fan. I can tell you all about it from last year. But the Timberwolves defense is there, and the only thing that would be considered <clears throat> questionable right now is if Anthony Edwards is going to be a mercenary when the game is on the line. Did I get that right at all, Ron? I, I mean, I think you nailed it, and I think uh, it on top of – outside of Ant, it's – the offense, which surprisingly, because our offense has been hasn't been the problem over the past few years, um, <laughs> offense seems to go through lulls at times, and they need to eliminate that. And I think a big part of why I, on top of the defense, why I think their offense will coincide with that come playoff time. Um, Cat has seemingly, you know, taken that you know, that baton or handed that baton, let it be known that it's Ann's team Mm -hmm. and he doesn't put up a fuss. Like he still goes out there. You can get you 25 a night on efficient shooting and him as an, as that secondary piece, you know, as long as he plays not reckless, like driving in the lane and throwing himself into the stanchion all the time. um, Like if he plays within himself, that combo alone is going to be extremely difficult to to play against. So um, I mean, Obviously, I'm excited for it. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Wolves fan. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's cool to be here talking about if they can get to the championship or not. Usually, we're talking about whether or not they can win a playoff game or a series. <laughs> Where they're up... going to pick in the lottery. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's that's... <laughs> That's that's most of the time, or at least the, before the last four years. Another team that was like that when I gave my little speech about the uh, Hawks was the Raptors, like the pre Kawhi Ra- Raptors. It was like, oh, they're they're fun, but there's no way they're going to do anything to the Cavs. <clears throat> Even All like right. the Pacers, like back when the yeah. Pacers were able to like in thirteen when they were able to give the Heat a run, mm-hmm. it was uh they just seemingly didn't have enough to get over that over that hump so yeah that team was good that was another team that played defense that's why they got to the uh Paul George Conference. Danny Granger Hibbert yep oh that oh that was like the the series of Hibbert's David life. West yep yeah. um all right guys we'll try to get Sally back here two weeks from tonight when we record again Silas in the meantime uh we appreciate you joining us what is your Twitter handle for the viewers and listeners my Twitter handle is at Bob and Dreyer NFL, B-O-B-E-N-D-R-I-E-R. Pretty long last name. It's kind of rough with fellas, but uh, <laughs> we'll get through it. And um, yeah, thank you for having me on. Oh, hell yeah. And you can find his work at Zone Coverage. Uh, Bryant, we will talk to you in about two weeks. We will, the next time we'll talk, we'll be going through probably a couple of Vikings free agent signings. All right, guys? Okay. All right, you guys take it easy. All right, All right thanks. Yeah.